In this video, you will learn how to throw better combinations by building up your punches. And by the end of this video, you will know how to apply this tactic on your next training session. Most people don't talk about this, but throwing successful combinations takes some serious skill. Since boxers are vulnerable when they are letting their hands go, picking the right moment for your combinations is really important. The best combination punchers are really good at reading their opponent and they pick the right moment to throw their combinations without getting countered. And who better to learn this skill than Bebo, one of the best combination punchers right now. But you may be wondering, why Bebo? He is one of the few fighters that can throw 6, 8, 10 or more punches in a combination at a championship level without getting countered. And he manages that by carefully building up his combinations to prevent his opponents from getting a read on him. The first thing that Bebo does before he lands his combinations is to establish a threat. You start by establishing a punch that you can consistently land without getting countered. For most fighters, it's the jab. And this is the punch that Bebo uses to build his whole offensive. He usually starts his fights throwing single jabs, overwhelming his opponents. And as he starts to build up momentum, he starts to throw double jabs, triple jabs, jabs and then a hook and so on. We start with Bebel showing his jab. He follows up with another jab. Now notice that on this third jab, how Canelo is starting to break his base. He started the sequence with the chin down in a solid base. By the third jab, he's breaking his base and he's starting to opening up his body. And now Bebel is taking that opening. Since Canelo is still leaning back, Bebel is taking more shots, as many as he can take. As we can see, Bebo's jab, always present on Canelo's face, is breaking his rhythm and as he overwhelms Canelo, he's finding the openings that he needs to throw his combination. Okay, on the second example, again, we start with the jab, Canelo starting in a solid base, changing levels and trying to press the action. Bebo follow-ups with more jabs. More jabs. As you can see, Canelo's really having a hard time reading that jab, countering it, or making him miss. And he's going to give up his solid base to open and exposed. Now Canelo's body is broken. And now that Bebel has established his threat and has overwhelmed Canelo, he's allowed to let his hands go. Rather, Bebel takes the body shot. Canelo steps out and again as he steps in and changes level, Bebel is just going to let his hands go with the combination. All the sequence started with Bebel's jab and as Canelo broke his base, Bebel was allowed to throw his combinations. But Bebel can only build up from his momentum because his jab established to be a threat, both as a scoring punch and to make damage. Right now, we're on the first round, and we can see how Bebo starts to establish his jab as a threat. For now, just throwing jabs outside of his punching range, just showing it to Canelo. Right now, neither Bebo or Canelo know what to expect from each other. So most of these jabs are not meant to make damage, just to see the reaction. We can see people jabbing the body, changing levels. And we can see that Bebel right away throws that jab, countering Canelo mid combination. Canelo's trying to change levels, cutting the distance on Bebel. And Bebel interrupts him with another jab. As we can see, even though Bebel is not doing a lot of damage, he's really annoying. And that's the whole point of establishing a threat. It doesn't have to always make physical damage. It can also do psychological damage. At this point, we can see Canelo trying to cut the distance. And for the rest of the sequence, we see Bebel using his lead hand to keep Canelo at bay. Jabbing, touching him. None of these punches are making damage, but they are breaking Canelo's rhythm. 
Canelo right now is throwing a big shot. He's just trying to regain control of the fight. And Bebo Dradaway takes it away, throwing yet another jab. And my favorite, he's even pushing Canelo out of the way with his lead hand. Bebo is being successful at keeping Canelo at bay just with his lead hand. And all this is making Canelo more and more aware of Bebo's lead hand. Now we're in the round 9 and we can see now the effects of Bebo's overwhelming jab. We're in the middle of an exchange and Bebo is right now changing levels. Let's see how Canelo reacts. Canelo kind of reacts by flinching, trying to parry the shot. Of course, Bebo was just fainting at him. And Bebo throws his real shots at one 2 Bebo faints again by changing levels. Let's see how Canelo is going to react. Canelo mistimed the punch, again, powering too early, and Bebo will throw a combination. Now, as we can see, all these punches are being missed, but the whole point of this sequence is for you to notice that Canelo is finding no answer to Bebo's jab. He's so afraid and so aware of that jab that he keeps reacting, moving, defending. He's not thinking offense anymore, he's thinking defense. When you see a fighter of the level of Canelo overreacting to feints, that's when you know that your jab is a real threat. And from this threat, all the other combinations are going to follow up. If people's jab isn't consistent and is not landing properly, or he's getting countered every time he's throwing a jab, he will not be able to build his momentum, and therefore he will not be able to land his combinations. So for this example, we are going to analyze Ramirez's fight against Bebo. In my opinion, Ramirez is a really solid combination puncher. Despite that, because he didn't establish a threat on his jab, he won't be able to make Bebo overreact and give him openings. So right now, for example, he's starting with his lead hand. Let's see what happens after. He follows up with a cross to the body, which is not a bad combination on itself. But we see Bebo right away countering him with a jab. Let's see another example. In this example, again, Ramirez is doing the right thing, using his lead hand as a setup for his combination. But as we can see, Bebo's still solid on his base, and he has a clear field of vision of what Ramirez is doing. So let's see how Bebo reacts. Ramirez tries to follow up with a cross to the body, but by this point, Bebo is already on his way out. Even though the setup of Ramirez was pretty solid, jab to the head, cross to the body, it didn't work because Bebel is not flinching. Bebel doesn't perceive a threat out of Ramirez's jab. And just one more example. Now we see Ramirez setting up his combination with his lead cross. Bebel is shelling up. And actually we can see that Ramirez is landing his right hand on Bebel. And we can tell that this caught him by surprise. So what is Bebel going to do next? He's already stepping out while Ramirez is just about to land his left hand. Even though Bebo was surprised, he's not overwhelmed by any of Ramirez's punch. So his mind's still clear, and he's doing what a smart fighter will do, which is you get hit and you're moving out of the way. And just like that, even though Ramirez landed a solid shot, he was not able to land his follow-up shots. And we can see Bebo solid on his base, ready to counter, or to keep defending. When you can land a single punch consistently, making your opponent hesitate and being wary about, that's when you know you're ready to start to build up combinations behind that shot. The second thing that Bebo does after establishing his jab as a threat is that he starts to follow up punches behind that jab. If he's getting away with a jab, then he's getting away with a double jab. Then maybe he's going to throw a jab and then a hook. Okay, so let's start to see how Bebo builds up his combinations, starting again with his lead hand. Another follow-up jab. Bebo is doing a feint. Canelo overreacts and opens up, and Bebo is already dropping his hand to throw a hook around the guard. 
Again, Canelo's making him miss by pulling away, but as you can see, because he's on his toes and he's playing catch up with Bebo's jab, now he's breaking his base. And because he opened up his body by leaning back, Bebo is exploiting that by jabbing the body. Now at this point we can see there is no answer from Canelo, he doesn't seem to want to get his points back, so Bebo is going to follow up with more shots. Think of this step as testing one combination at a time. If I can get away with a 1-2, most likely I will be able to get away with a 1-2-3. If I can get away with a 3-punch combination, it means that I can start to build up with 4, 5 and so on. On this example, again Bebo starts with a single jab, then a few doubles and he slowly starts to build up, following up with his right hand. Right there the jab, double jab, and right there the follow-ups. This example is the same story, Bebo starting with a single jab, doubling up and building up his combinations. Right there, showing his jab, showing his jab, Canelo breaks his base and he throws a combination. Now, I know that Bebo is missing most of his shots, but he's dealing with Canelo, a fighter that has a really good defense. The whole point of this video is to show that even Canelo is not able to counter combinations when they are set up in the right moments in the right way. The whole point of this system is to keep throwing off your opponent by adding punches to every combination. This way, they are playing catch up with you because they are not only worried about that shot that you establish as a threat, but you are also building more punches behind it. What will happen if your opponent starts to have a read on you or he's starting to even land some counters on you? Like many things in boxing, this method requires you to be able to read your opponent. To explain how the third point works out, let's start the sequence with Bebo landing a combination on Canelo. Right there, landing his lead hand, follow up with cross to the body, and a hook to the head. Now Canelo at this point is trying to get some momentum back, he is right now fainting with his lead hand, and following up with a big shot. So Bebo is answering just with a single jab. He's being careful to not throw a combination where he could walk into an over right hand or a left hook. And we can see again, this is a Canelo that is aggressive, that is trying to push the action on Bebo. He follows up with another big shot. The only thing that Bebo can do is to get back to his single jabs and building him up, similar to how he did it on the first round. So right there, he throws another single jab, testing which kind of Canelo he's dealing with. He follows up with a hook. He throws another jab. After a handful of jabs, we can see that this is a Canelo that's starting to be more passive. And this is allowing two people to start to build up his combinations all over again. Whether people measures, throws a cross to the body, follows up with a hook. In this whole sequence, Bebo has been really good at reading Canelo. As soon as Canelo starts to punch back, Bebo goes back to his singles and builds up his combinations from scratch. In the previous example, you notice that as soon as Canelo was starting to build up some momentum, Bebo changed gears, stepped back and went back to his singles. And as soon as he saw Canelo slowing down, he will start to build up his combinations all over again. In a similar way, you want to apply this tactic when you are sparring. If you are dealing with an opponent that is constantly throwing punches at you, encountering you every single time, it will be hard to throw a three punch combination because most likely they will try to punch you back as soon as you let your hands go. You might stick to single, doubles, and you might use other tactics instead. On the other hand, if you're dealing with someone who starts to slow down and you're able to make them hesitate with your jab, that's the perfect moment for you to start to build up your punches, to keep throwing them off, and then you might start to land your three shot combinations for punches or more. Remember that tactics and techniques are just tools that we use to solve specific problems. 
To illustrate the kind of people that you can throw combinations at, or not, we're going to use two different canelos. This first canelo is the aggressive canelo, the one that is not letting you throw combinations, because he's constantly trying to counter you. Right there we see Canelo pressing the action, he's getting hit but still in the fight, trying to come back at you with punches. The second Canelo is the kind of fighter that you want to throw combinations at, overreactive and that break his base when you're punching them. Right there we see Canelo backing up, he goes to the ropes, he breaks his base, Bebel is letting his hands go. If this video was helpful, please share it with your sparring partners. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.